Uh, dear friends, uh, welcome to the uh, 13th uh, video lecture uh, of our differential geometry course. Uh, today I'll uh, start from the point we finished uh, last time. I'll start with the definition of uh, principal frame. So <clears throat> a principal frame on a surface M is an adapted frame frame E1, E2, E3 so that so that E1 and E2 are principal vectors. We know that uh, in an adapted frame, E3 is always the normal uh, vector to the surface. Therefore, E1 and E2 spans the tangent space at any point. Uh, but in this special case, we ask E1 and E2 uh, to be uh, principal vectors. Okay. Uh, here is a lemma. Uh, if we are at a point which is not umbilic, then of course we know that there are exactly two principal directions, uh, and therefore we can choose E1 and E2 to be those directions. But this lemma tells us that we can do this not at a point, but uh, actually in a neighborhood of that point. So if P is an umbilic, non umbilic. Umbilic point of M, then uh, there is a principal frame, frame in a neighborhood of the point P. Okay, so sorry. So uh, suppose we are at the point P like this, uh, then uh, there is a neighborhood uh, if it is non umbilic, and on this neighborhood. Uh, we can choose a frame, principal frame, so that at each point, uh, principal uh, E1 and E2 are principal directions. Okay, so like this E1 and E2. Okay, uh, the proof is basically some linear algebra and uh, continuity argument. So, uh, by hypothesis, uh, K1P is different than K2P, and therefore, uh, and thus, since KIs are continuous functions, uh, of P why they are continuous because they are uh, just basically roots of the uh, shape operator characteristic equation of the shape operator uh, the coefficients of that characteristic equation are some polynomial entries of the shape operator therefore those uh, are uh, Okay, I'll uh, write it in a minute, but uh, uh, are, they are just uh, continuous functions, polynomials of the uh, entries of the shape operator. 
and then uh, since the coefficients of the quadratic equation, the characteristic equation of the shape operator are continuous, the roots uh, are also continuous functions of those uh, coefficients uh, by the quadratic uh, formula. So let me uh, write that down. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, K1 different than K2 on a neighborhood hood of P. Okay, because they are continuous functions uh, and <clears throat> they are different at this point means the difference, for example, is not zero. That's an open condition. Therefore, around this point P, they are also uh, different. Uh, the difference is different than zero. Okay, now uh, let f1, f2, f3 be any adapted frame frame uh, on this neighborhood, defined on this neighborhood. Good. Uh, and uh, let S, which is Sij, uh, so it is this one, S11, S12, okay, S12, because it's a symmetric matrix, S22, uh, be the matrix representation. of the shape operator in the spaces okay well uh, k1 and k2 are just the eigen uh, values of this matrix so I need to consider the characteristic equation the characteristic equation equation is what uh, zero equals determinant of s minus lambda times identity and this is just lambda squared minus trace of s uh, okay trace of s times lambda plus determinant of s so this is equal to lambda squared minus uh, s11 plus is 2 2 well this is just actually I should say twice the uh, scalar curvature plus determinant determinant is the Gauss curvature okay from this we get lambda 1 and 2 uh, from the quadratic formula 2h plus minus 4h squared minus 4k divided by 2. So this is just uh, h plus minus h squared minus k. Okay. Let's zoom in. Okay. Uh, well, lambda 1 is the larger root. Lambda 2 is the smaller root, so uh, uh, lambda or k1 is just uh, k1 is just h uh, plus okay minus k and k2 is just uh, h minus Okay. Okay. Uh, well, these are just you know h is just the sum of the uh, entries here s1 and s2. So h is uh, s11 plus s22. Well, actually two times this. Okay. Uh, no, uh, half of this. Uh, 
S11 plus S22 and K is the determinant. Therefore, they are both continuous, both continuous. And hence, uh, K1 and K2 are continuous. Okay. So this is the explanation of what we have said uh, uh, here. Okay, continuous functions. Well, our aim is to find uh, eigen vectors. How to find the eigen vectors? Principal directions. Principal. directions are the uh, eigen vectors of s so how do you find this uh, the first eigen vector corresponding to the eigen value let's say uh, uh, let's say uh, u1 so no e1 uh, so it should be k1 times e1 so how do you find this e1 well we know that it is the solution of this equation s minus k1 times identity matrix times e1 equals 0 if you write this you get a 2 by 2 system but each uh, you know uh, Although we have two equations, you know that uh, the two equations are uh, actually the same. Basically, one of them is a multiple of the other one. So it is enough to write one of them. And the first one is this. Where we write uh, E1 is, uh, you know, AB. Like this. This is the equation. And from this, if you solve this equation, uh, you know, we get this as the solution. Uh, for example, we can just let A1 to be S12 and then A2 to be K1 minus S11. So this is one solution. Uh, and this is an eigenvector. Similarly, E2 is just... Uh, Uh, e2 is just k2 minus s22 uh, uh, okay comma uh, s12 okay so what are the vectors these are of course coordinates of the eigen vectors in the frame e1 e2 so what are the vectors then hence e1 is this vector so these are the coordinates so it is just s12 times the first vector k1 minus s11 times the second vector but we know that since this is a frame we should it should be unit uh, vector so we divide it by its length Okay, and what is E2? E2 is just, this is the coordinates. So S1 to F1, K1 minus S11. Uh, no, I'm sorry. These are the coordinates. K2 minus S2 to F1 plus S1 to F2 divided by the length of this vector k2 minus s2 to f1 plus f s1 to f2 okay uh, and finally so i have find uh, you know these uh, vectors here uh, f1 f2 uh, is a frame 
and this is a linear combination of the frame. Uh, all these coefficient functions are continuous. This is never zero. You know that eigenvectors are not zero vectors, so uh, dividing by the length doesn't uh, cause any problem. Uh, and these are all continuous functions. Finally, let so uh, e1 and e2 are uh, clearly continuous because they are just uh, you know continuous expressions of continuous functions continuous uh, and uh, just let e3 be this okay so uh, this finishes the proof uh, and Uh, e1, e2, e3 is a principal frame. Okay. Okay. Uh, so this finishes the proof. Now we proceed uh, by the following consideration. Now let e1 e2 e3 be a principal frame okay uh, with of course these are the eigenvectors so shape operator on this one is just the first principal curvature times this and s times this is just k times uh, k2 times e2. Uh, by a corollary uh, from the previous section, we know that we know that uh, the shape operator on any vector is this. This is just the covariant derivative of the E3, uh, the third basis element. Uh, and the covariant derivative has curvature uh, connection forms. And this is this can be written like this. Okay. And thus, we see that uh, if you combine these two with the previous one, uh, so if I put E1 here, I will get E1 here. So this coefficient should be 1 for E1, and this should be 0. And thus, uh, W13 at E1 uh, should be K1, and W23 at E1 should be 0 because there is no E2 term here. Uh, and W13 E2 is 0 and W23 E2 is K2. Okay. Okay. Again, uh, from this, uh, now it follows that. Follows that. Uh, w13 uh, uh, is just k1 times theta1, and w23 is just k2 times theta2.
Now uh, we will finish uh, this section uh, by the uh, following theorem. Uh, Uh, yeah, here is the theorem. Uh, if E1, E2, E3 is a, a principal frame, frame on a surface in R3, uh, then, then uh, E1 evaluated at k2 k2 so i just take derivative of k2 uh, along the vector e1 the result is this k1 minus k2 times the one form uh, evaluated on the uh, frame element e2 and e2 of k1 this is just again k1 minus k2 and then w12 e1 this time okay so uh, this is basically uh, kodazi equation uh, and we will use that to prove this now uh, from the kodazi equations we studied uh, last time on a surface we have d13 so exterior derivative of this form is uh, w12 and then 23 wedge product and d of uh, 23 is w uh, 2 1 or minus 1 2 and then 1 3 now by the uh, <clears throat> uh, above consideration we know that uh, w 1 3 is this and w 2 3 is this so if I just plug those hence this is just <clears throat> Uh, okay uh, so w13 is w13 is k1 times theta1 so k1 times theta1 this is uh, Maybe I should write uh, since uh, by the line we have uh, above above the theorem we have this omega one three is just k one times theta one and omega two three is k2 times theta2 right uh, we get 
d of k1 theta1 which is d of omega1 3 and this is uh, omega 1 2 times omega 2 3 but omega 2 3 is just k2 times theta 2 and from this we get so this is dk1 wedge theta 1 minus k1 times d theta 1 No, this is plus because I skip uh, a zero form. And then this is equal to K2 times <clears throat> 1, 2, theta 2. And uh, from the first, uh, I'm not sure, from the structural equations we have d theta 1 d theta 1 is omega 1 2 which omega 2 uh, theta 2 uh, and thus we get what so if i plug all these d k1 which theta 1 plus k1 times uh, omega 1 to which this so this is k2 times 1 to which theta 2 so from this we get d k1 which theta 1 is equal to k2 minus k1 times omega 1 2 which uh, theta 2 uh, now this is a two form this is another two form let's compute uh, let's compute uh, both sides on the uh, pair of vectors uh, e1 e2 well if i uh, do this computation so dk1 theta1 e1 e2 we get what so dk1 of e1 dk1 of e1 times uh, theta 1 of e2 well this is 0 minus dk1 of e2 times theta 2 of e2 well this is just 1 so this is minus dk1 of minus dk1 of e2 okay Uh, similarly if I compute the other side the uh, other side similarly k2 minus k1 times w12 which theta2 evaluated on this pair of vectors uh, okay, this time the first term will be zero because I will have theta two times e one, which is zero. So only the second term survives. So this is just minus k two minus k one. Uh, this is evaluated on this, which is one, and this is evaluated on this. So omega one two e one. Okay. Now if I compare these two, I get uh, what? Uh, so uh, uh, hence thus e2 k1 which is just d k1 of e2 and d k1 of e2 is just I have minus sign minus sign here uh, 
for rights. Oh, I don't have minus sign here. The first term, this is the first term, the second term is zero. So if I compare these two, we get just k1 minus k2 times omega 1, 2, e1. Okay. Uh, this is half of the uh, statement. Uh, we need to prove the, the second one is second. The second statement is similar. So I will not do that. Okay. Okay, let's see. Uh, Let me start uh, now uh, section uh, 6.3. Some uh, global theorems about the geometry of surfaces. Uh, first of all, this is an easy observation. Uh, if the shape operator is identically zero then m is a part of a plane in r3 uh, provided that M is connected. Okay. Proof. Well, uh, shape operator is zero, and this implies that implies that uh, for any for any unit uh, normal uh, field u uh, we have s v u is zero so i have this i know that shape operator on a vector is equal to this and this is zero uh, so that so that uh, U is parallel, namely, uh, in other words, constant along any vector. Well, choose any point. P in M. Uh, for any other point, for any other point, point Q in M, uh, choose a path. Let alpha T be a path, smooth path with this property. Uh, alpha 0 is equal to p and alpha 1 is q so this is a path just joining uh, p to q okay now consider the function on the surface, uh, not on the surface, on the interval uh, f of uh, t uh, 
alpha t minus p dot u. This is a function on the interval 0, 1. Okay. So I just look at the vector alpha t minus p and take its dot product with the constant vector u. I know that u, uh, the normal field is constant. So it is a constant vector. Okay. Well then, uh, now f prime t is what? This is just alpha prime t dot u plus alpha t dot u prime, but u prime is just zero. So this is alpha prime t dot uh, uh, u. And this is zero. Why is that? Because, because alpha is a curve on m, therefore alpha prime, uh, alpha prime t is tangent to the surface and uh, u is a normal vector, therefore this is zero. But this means this function is constant, hence f of t is constant. In particular, uh, f of q is equal to, sorry, f of 1. What is f of 1? When I plug 1, I get uh, uh, q minus uh, p dot u, which is what? This is alpha 1 minus p dot u. So this is just uh, f of 1. And since it is constant, this is f of 0. And f of 0 is what? Uh, p minus p. Alpha 0 minus uh, p dot u. But this is just 0, right? This is just alpha 0. So this means what? Uh, p and q, hence... So this product is zero implies what? Hence, Q is in the plane, is in the plane, plane, let's say gamma, uh, containing P with normal uh, U, but Q is an arbitrary point since uh, q is an arbitrary point of m uh, we see that m lies in gamma uh, you may ask where did we use the connectedness argument we used the connectedness argument here uh, we choose a path from uh, p to q such a path exists only if your surface is connected. So, uh, uh, so since uh, M is connected. There is such path. Okay. So this finishes the proof because our surface is a part of a plane. Okay. Now, uh, if the Gauss, sorry, if the shape operator is zero, uh, then uh, we see that uh, the surface uh, has to be a plane uh, uh, part. Now we will uh, prove uh, an analogous surface uh, for the Gaussian curvature. Uh, we will uh, see that a surface with constant Gaussian curvature if it is compact, it has to be uh, a sphere 
so uh, 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 that's a very nice global theorem. It is called. Uh, let me see what was the name. Uh, Weibman theorem. Uh, a compact surface in R3 with constant Gaussian curvature is a sphere. Uh, to prove that theorem, we need to make some preparation. And the first step of the preparation is the following. Uh, first, I have a definition. A surface M is called all umbilic if uh, every point of of M is umbilic. So if the principal uh, uh, curvatures are equal at each point k1 and k2 are equal at each point then uh, we say that uh, the surface is all umbilic. Uh, the first lemma is a uh, 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 is about restriction on the Gaussian curvature of such surfaces let's just write it down if m is a connected all umbilic uh, surface then m has constant constant gaussian curvature curvature uh, K, which is uh, also positive. Okay, so this is a very strong result, right? Uh, if K1 and K2 are equal to each other at all points, then actually uh, the Gaussian curvature has to be constant and it has to be positive. Well, uh, positivity follows from the fact that since it is umbilic, K1 is equal to K2, so uh, Gaussian curvature was the product of the uh, scalar curvatures, uh, sorry, uh, principal curvatures. Therefore, it is just, uh, you know, square of uh, uh, the common normal curvature, uh, principal curvature. Therefore, it is positive. Okay, now let's see how can we prove this. Let uh, E1, E2, E3 be an adapted frame. This means E1 and E2 are tangent to the surface and E3 is uh, a normal vector. Uh, so at any point P of the surface we have the following uh, k1 p is equal to k2 p let's say this is kp uh, for uh, okay uh, by the theorem we just proved about uh, before this section uh, by the uh, theorem we uh, uh, proved uh, before uh, section 6.3 we have we have the following e1 of k2 is equal to k1 minus k2 Omega 1 to E2 and E2 of K1 is K1 minus K2 
omega 1 2 and here I have e1 okay right so uh, this is just uh, this theorem yes okay Well, by the assumption K1 and K2 are equal to each other, therefore these are zero. Hence, E1, uh, K2 is equal to E2, K1. These are zero at all points. Okay. Well, this means, hence, uh, so, uh, so, what is this? This is just dk2e1, and this is just dk1e2, right? So, these are zero. Uh, but K1 and K2 are the same, uh, right? These are all the same. Uh, maybe I should write just K because K1 and K2, let's see here. K is K1 equals K2. So this means, uh, so that, so that uh, K is identically zero. DK is identically zero. DK is zero on M. Okay, but however, uh, Gaussian curvature is just K1 times K2, which is K squared, and hence, and hence, DK, the exterior derivative of the Gaussian curvature is just 2K times DK, but this one form is zero, so this one form is zero. Uh, so that k is uh, constant, right? Its exterior derivative is zero, therefore it has to be constant. Okay. All right. Let me see. Okay. Well, all right. Let me stop here for today. Uh, next time I'll continue uh, from this point on.